God is not angry with you because of the fluctuation of the good times and the bad. God remains a friend to those who would choose him. God is eternally faithful. The changing seasons and the rolling tides of our lives, the ups and the downs, are not evidence of when God likes us and when he does not. God is ever our friend. I've been wrestling with Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 2 through 8 for the last couple of days and trying to discover some meaning in it or more pointedly. I've been trying to figure out how to make this make sense in an applicable way where I could kind of understand it in a way that works in my life. I came up with just two thoughts. The providence of God dispossesses us of every detail of our lives. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 2 through 8. This is talking about uh, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to harvest, a time to kill, a time for healing. It's very difficult words, I think, for a lot of our modern ears. There are 14 of these contrasts between good things and what we would typically describe as bad things or difficult things, of joyful experiences and then trials. The ups and downs of life are not evidence that God now loves you and now he doesn't. It's not that at all. It is evidence of a couple of things. One, the providence of God. He chooses to do or to allow the things that occur in the world to cause or to, to sort, of, sort of initiate or to allow the things that happen. According to his divine will and providence, there is a degree to which we must accept that our hands are not capable of holding the world and controlling of everything and all that is or would be. So on the one hand, a passage like this affirms for us that God's providence dispossesses us of control. But we've got to be careful. I was reading the commentary on this subject, on this passage from the late James Vernon McGee, and he says this. He says, now we find Solomon seeking satisfaction in fatalism. That is Koheleth, the writer. This book most commonly attributed to the wisdom of Solomon. Now he's seeking satisfaction in fatalism. This is Solomon's viewpoint as he expresses it, McGee writes. In our day, we hear the expression, take life as it comes, or as I have said often so many times, accept life on life's terms. Something I heard so many years ago, accept life on life's terms. So on the one hand, this passage of scripture makes it clear, these 14 contrasts of the joys and the hardships of life. Make it clear that God is providentially in control. Man is dispossessed of his ability to control. Consider the changing tides of the ocean. Can man do anything in his own strength, even in his technology, to hold back properly the, the changing tides of the seas? So we can try. But the force of the natural processes, those things which God has set into motion, eventually cause even our most powerful dams, our apparatus, our levees, and our structures to fail. So on the one hand, we read a passage like this, and we, we know that God is providentially in control. And then, as, as McGee says, though, he says, be careful to avoid fatalism. Because it can sound wise to say, accept life on life's terms. And we must, because God is providence, has providence, is providential. However... You and I must avoid the trap of fatalism in simply letting go by way of saying, it is what it is, and all that shall be is what it shall be. No, listen. It is what it is because God is providential and there is purpose and meaning in the things that he orchestrates or allows. You see, the trap of fatalism would be to say, accept life on life's terms and just be a stoic. Like those ancient Roman philosophers who said, put your hand to the plow and work hard. No, Jesus says, put your hand to the plow and don't look back at the old sinful ways, at the old uh, fatalistic ways. Put your hand to the plow and don't look back. Look forward unto me. Now, Matthew 10, uh, 42, Jesus says, come unto me, all you who labor, and I will give you rest. All you who are heavy laden, take my yoke upon you for 
It is easy and my burden is light for I am gentle and lowly of heart. You, you, you see, there, there is, on the one hand, acceptance of the divine providence of God. We cannot hold back the changing tides and the, of the seas. We can't stop the earth from shaking. We, we can't grab a hold of the tornado and wrestle it into submission. But what we can do is accept these things and then turn our eyes to our friend, God, who has rescued us in Jesus who has demonstrated the full measure of his love at the cross and has given us a future and a present hope because of an empty tomb. You see, accept that God is providential, that we cannot control things. But don't become a fatalist and say, accept life on life's terms and just get through it. No, become a futurist, a friendshipist. We have a friend in the trial. His name is God who created all things, who comes to us in Jesus and dwells in us in the Holy Spirit. And we have a present and future hope because we serve a resurrected King. Listen, be mindful not to cling and control things that are out of our control and be purposeful to pray to the one who controls all things. God bless you today. Amen.